Hi, I'm Phil Jackson, and today's task is to use earthworks to drain a swamp into a river. We're going to create an infield design for that drain. We're going to start by touching the job setup tile and then change the mode to infield for infield design. We'll select the design button and then we'll touch the create button. We're going to create this alignment by walking the excavator along the path the drain is to take and positioning each change in alignment with the focus point on the bucket. We'll select focus to allow that to happen. Our bucket is sitting at the start point of the drain and the focus point is exactly where we need to be to start the alignment, so we'll add a point. You can see at the top of the screen the northing, easting and elevation of that point. Now let's walk the excavator down a bit. And we're walking the excavator, you can see the dotted lines gone off the screen and about 50 metres from where we started we're going to create another point with the excavator at the right place. And there's the second point. As soon as you push create point, it jumps onto screen. You can see the distance we've traveled and you can see the height, which is very important. Here we are, we're traveling a little further and stopping and we're positioning ourselves correctly we're going to create another point there right let's try drive the excavator to the next point that we want And we've reached that point now. We place the bucket on the point that we want and create another point. We're going to move the excavator to the next point and drive there. When we get there, we'll stop and we'll create another point. Now it only remains to drive to the river and when we get there, we'll create the last point. Driving and stop and place the bucket on that point. I'm now going to pan the screen up so you can see where we've gone. The excavator bucket and focus point is shown with that blue square. You can see that um, we've traveled down a long way, but you can't actually see the length we've traveled because it's showing information for the previous segment. So let's create a point and immediately it updates. I'm now going to zoom in and you can see the information for that last segment. What we're going to do now before we move on is check the alignment of this ditch. Let's look at that second corner. We want this corner to be approximately equal angles so that the water doesn't flow around a sharp bend. That looks pretty good to me. But let's look at this one. Oh dear, we've not been nearly so careful in creating this corner. What I'll do now is I'm going to touch and hold one of those points and drag it to a better position. But first, I'm going to release the grid lock. Now, I don't have to lock my point to a grid position. Touch and hold, changes yellow, and I can drag this around because I know the ground is relatively flat there. That looks like a much better curve for my alignment. I will now zoom and pan so that the whole alignment appears on screen and I'm pretty happy with that. 
So now I'm going to look at the elevation. Looking at the elevation, I can see two blue dots. And it's very hard to see the vertical change because the scale is so small. What I want to do is have two constant slopes. From the first point to the third point, I, so I touched that and I touched that, and now I know that I can have a constant slope between them. If I zoom in, let's have a look and see where that green dot is. It's pretty much on line, but to, I think it's just below. I'm going to touch this icon at the bottom, and when I do, that green dot will snap to design. There we go. It didn't move very much at all. Now I'm going to create a constant slope from that third point to my last point. That point to that point. You can clearly see these two green dots are above the line. So when I touch my snap to alignment or create a stable slope, you can see them jump down just like that. I've now created my alignment in both the horizontal and in the elevation. So next I'll step on and we'll select a section to apply to that design. I can create it on screen with my finger. I can use the focus point on the bucket if I'm replicating an existing ditch profile or section, or I can select it from previously defined sections. And look at that, I've got a swale design down at the bottom. That's pretty good. I'm going to say done for that selection. And I'm not quite done. I want to anchor the center of this swale onto my alignment, but there's no point to anchor it on. So if I highlight this point and create a new point, it will be created halfway along the next segment, which happens to be exactly where I want it. Now I'm happy with that, I can press next. The software's automatically attached my section to my alignment, and now I can zoom in and see where it is. Unfortunately, it's selected the first point. Let's use this icon to step it through the, the attachment point, through the points of the section, and now it's where I want it. Next, I'm going to 3D view, and I'm going to zoom in on my design, and I'm going to move it around and have a look at it to make sure that it looks like what I think I've created. This is a sanity check to make sure nothing's going the wrong way or been misapplied. And I'm very happy with that. You can see the blue alignment is the center line, and you can see the swale has been equally applied in both directions. Whilst in the screen, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Swamp if I spell correctly, swamp space drain. And I'm happy with that. Now I save it. Having saved the infield design, I am going to select it. And now I'm going to apply it. Having applied that, I'm ready to start the software and go dig on my swale drain. If I go across to here, I can see a different view of it. The 3D view is ready to go, and I'm going to raise my bucket and start digging. 